Welcome back to this edition of Music for Dancers, where we're going to help you get a further grounding and understanding of the music. So today's topic is measures and bars, which is one of the fundamental units that musicians talk about and think about in terms of how the music is organized. This, this plays into our principle that music has structure, and if we can understand the smallest unit, we can build them into something called phrases, which is where we're going with this. But before we do the phrases, we need to look at the smaller unit and understand how it works so that we can have the bigger picture in mind. In addition to the measures and bars, what we're gonna talk about is how the count for musicians maps to the dancers. Now this is not news to you. Most of you know that different people count the music differently. And different instructors will count the same thing in different ways and they all need to relate back to each other, like translating two languages one to another. When you understand how the musicians are counting and you understand how different dance instructors count the same thing, you can map it in your head and you'll always be able to translate and relate it back to the music, which musicality that doesn't relate to the music makes zero sense. So we're gonna make sure we understand the count and how some of the different counts relate to each other as well. The fundamental unit of time that musicians are thinking about is called a measure. And in this measure, they can subdivide it into equal parts or unequal parts, but they take something that's a certain amount of time and they divide it all up. Now, one minute of time can be 60 seconds or it can be two half minutes. It's the same thing, it all equals one minute. And in, in terms of a measure, you could also think of a measuring cup. If I'm doing some fancy cooking and I need a cup of milk, what I could do is obviously take the one cup here and fill it with milk. But, you know, I'm not the best chef and maybe I don't have all the proper tools, so I want to divide it up and I have a quarter cup. Well, it's pretty obvious that I could take four of these guys and put it in there, and now I've divided my one measure into four equal parts. As long as I use a smaller one, it's equivalent. And when we talk about time and the way musicians are thinking about things, they have this master unit of time, one measure, and they subdivide it and to make it sound the way they want. At the same time, they could be taking this measure and if they want a lot of notes in there, they can add just use teaspoons. And as long as you know how many teaspoons and it fills up the measure exactly the same every single time, then that works just as well too. Now we've just looked at that concept through a measuring cup. So a measure is a certain amount of time, but visually we can do the same thing with this screen here. The screen is a certain size, but if we choose to, we can cut the screen in half. And now you see two of me, but those two are obviously smaller. With the same amount of screen real estate, we could divide it into four, or we can divide it into eight. We only have a certain amount of screen, and so now that I'm back full screen, I take the whole thing, but we can divide it up a lot of different ways, and it doesn't always need to be symmetrical. But the unit, the measure, this one screen, remains the same, but we can divide it different ways, and that's what musicians are doing. Earlier, I promised you that we'd talk about measures and bars. And here's a piece of music. I'll put a little example up here on the screen. This is what a piece of music looks like. And when musicians are writing music, they put this line in between each measure, and those are called bar lines. So over time, the shorthand for a measure has also become bar. So a musician, a musician might say, or a dancer might say 16 bars or eight bars. Well, that just means there's those many dividing points between the music, and that's how many measures. So anytime you hear an instructor say either 16 measures or 16 bars, they're the same thing. So let's take what we know about bars and measures and let's apply it to some music. We're gonna to listen to a tune by Usher called How Do I Say, and I'll give credits down below about this song. But I'm gonna play it through one time and then we're gonna count it multiple ways. It's a slow tune because it's easier to understand the concepts with a nice laid back song. During the first half of this, I'm gonna count it in four like the musicians would, and then I'll overlay on the second eight bars some other counts. Five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, 
three, four, one, two, two, four, three, six, four, two, 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 four, five, six, four, and eight, three, two, two, four, five, six, four, and eight, four, two, two, four, five, six, four, five, two, two, four, three, six, four, and eight, six, two, two, four, three, six, four, seven, two, two, four, five, six, four, and eight, eight, two, two, four, five, six, four, and eight, one. Obviously those are just two different counting systems happening at the same time or they're equivalent. So the one will map. So I could be sit talking as a musician and saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're equivalent, they map, they come together. If they're both happening at once, you hear that one's a line. Now there's a set of instructors out there that also when they count, they leave out the, the counts where people don't step. Uh, common among Latin instructors. So if we're doing something like uh, we're counting on one, salsa on one, you'll often hear this one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven. And what that's about is they're simply not saying the four and eight out loud, but it's in the music. So it's still there. So don't get confused that if I'm saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven. And there are a set of instructors that also use quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. It's the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. And the slow is really twice as long as a fast or a quick, excuse me. There's, they're twice as long as a quick, but they're equivalent, they map. And when you know how it works in the music, you're always mapping the steps back to the music. And then as we conclude this section on counting, there is something, there are a set of instructors, some amazing instructors that count the steps, like the footsteps. And they're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six in a Latin context but they're not gonna count anything that relates to the song. They count the steps, and I've seen it in tango, I've seen it in jazz occasionally, and I've seen it in salsa, where they count the steps, but they are not relating those steps back to the music, not the one in the music. And there is some validity to that. I've seen some amazing dancers and some amazing instructors put out some amazing people. Personally, I don't care for it because I want to map and understand where the one works with the music and then how my dancing's relating to the music. So you will find a set of instructors that are counting the footsteps and they're not counting the music. So you have to be careful if you hear something that doesn't seem to match against the one, that's what they're doing. So that's just a taste of the counting and it's not everything. It's an awful lot, but it's not everything. It just gives us a grounding so that we can talk about some of the things that I'm passionate about, which is the feel of music and the phrasing and the way that works and how you get to apply that to your dancing. So I'm excited about some of the cuts that I've got coming up here over the next few weeks and months. Now, be sure we go ahead and we rate this, give it a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, and I can't wait to hear your comments about how you're feeling about this series. It's gonna go on and on and on and on. So, we'll see you on the next edition of Music for Dancers.